What's up guys? What's growing on? So I just realized I've never made a vlog while it's dark out. So it's uh, 545 in the morning. I'm doing my gear check. Yeti's in the truck checking my batteries, checking my memory cards, and I'm getting ready to go film you all an epic farm. So hold tight. This place is going to be serious. All right guys, little pond farm. Hoping you guys got an awesome sunrise there. And we're in Bushnell, Florida. So we're about 30 miles north of my farm. We are on a 26 acre site. And this site is um, you know, really interesting because they do a lot of market gardening and they're growing all types of neat annual crops out here. They're crushing it with tomatoes. They're crushing it with microgreens. And I think what's most interesting is they're crushing it with cut flowers. That's probably a main gig out here. Um, everybody's out here doing harvesting. Today is Friday. Tomorrow they go to market. So, you know, tomorrow is their big market, their CSA pickup. Um, you know, obviously most of the large retail sales during the week. So, a lot of prep, a lot of harvesting today. I think you guys are going to catch a lot of cool stuff here. Hold tight. My name is Cole Turner. Thanks, and I Cole. I'm here with my partner, Ellen Tremarco. I'm Ellen. Nice to meet you, Ellen. Nice to meet you. So you and your partner Cole kind of run the show here, huh? Yeah. We're a five acre diversified uh, fruit, veggie, and flower farm and we are certified organic and we grow for the St. Pete Saturdays morning market and a CSA. So this is pretty much peak season for y'all right now, right? Pretty much, yeah. We'll kind of reach another peak in February and March. Okay. And then April is probably our peak month. Um, nice. Where we have pretty much everything that we have. We pretty much have everything. Cool. Um, all of the warm weather crops, all of the cool weather crops. So, one so what is this here on my right side? On your right are scallions and the, leeks. Scallions and leeks, nice. The scallions in the middle and they come out quick. And then the leeks. Once the scallions are out, then we top dress and we give them. Um, and we kill them. And then they'll grow for like another month and a half or two months and then we pull the leeks out. A lot of this farming's trial and error, huh? Definitely, especially in Florida. There's not a lot of information and there are so many different things that you can yeah. you can do here that you can't do anywhere else. So Cole, did you go to school for this stuff or what? Uh, no, I didn't. I pretty much have no background in farming. Um, I did, for a brief period of time, I was farming in Georgia. And that's kind of how I got my feet wet in farming and then decided that that's what I wanted to do and then kind of came back to Florida to figure it out. Nice. So. Cole, how old are you? I am 24 years old. 24 years old? You've been doing this five years since you were 19? Yes. That is awesome. That's what I'm talking Sorry. about. So straight from high school to farming. Pretty much, yeah. This is no easy job, huh? <laughs> it's definitely not easy. A lot of the knowledge is hard won in Florida, I think. Um, but yeah, if you do it for long enough, then quite rewarding, though, huh? Figure it out. Yeah, definitely rewarding. Um, I discovered that yeah, it was my passion. I like to grow food. I like to feed people. Both Ellen and I are. We want to grow as much food as we can possibly grow. Um, feed as many people as we can possibly feed, and also kind of push the seasonality of different things in Florida. Try to have as much diversity as possible all the time. Nice. 
Now you guys are all, I mean, you're certified organic too, right? We are, yeah. That's just recent season. or? Mm -hmm. As okay. of this year, um, we've always followed the guidelines that applied for it at the end of last season. We were inspected this summer and the week before our first market and CSA distribution, we were officially certified and um, all, so now all of the produce and all of the flowers that we grow are certified organic by QCS. I know uh, organic's just a word in a lot of ways. People know you now, you know, I think they trust you. Yeah. Does, it, does it help get a little bit more premium on product or? Um, our prices haven't changed. They haven't raised them or anything, okay. No, we um, kind of wanted credit where we felt like it was due. We were, you know, following all of the standards yeah. and it's a shame you got to prove it, but it's kind of how it works these days, huh? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people maybe don't believe in the certification, but I think if you're growing a crop organically, then you should get the credit for it, you know? Yeah. So, it was a long time goal and we finally did it. And this isn't something you went to school for either, right? No, I did go to school for biology, but not farming. <laughs> not farming, okay. No. Found your passion? Yes, definitely. Cool, very yeah, nice. I love doing this. So what's the most rewarding part out here for you? I love working with the tomatoes, and this year we got to graft our first tomatoes. Whoa! So that was really exciting, and they're doing great. Nice. But I just love being able to be outside and work with the plants every day and the people nice. on our crew. What's the, the big benefits behind the grafting? Is it disease resistance, or...? Yeah, definitely. There are some, um, there's fusarium in the soil, in the Florida soils. Even in 20 year old pine stands, they found it. And that can, for tomatoes that are in a greenhouse that are pruned, that'll go for, you know, six months or so, um, they get susceptible to root diseases over that long period of time. Wow. So it's good to graft them and then you get a resistant rootstock. Very nice. And you, are you grafting the cherries and the big ones I saw over there? Yeah, that so house both. is grafted, that house is not. Not over here, yeah. okay. And the production, any different from the two houses? It's hard to tell so far because they're just starting. It's young still? Produce. Yeah. Okay. What are we harvesting over here? This is Totsoy. Totsoy? Okay. Yeah. And Jamie's getting Joy Toy. Though. Nice. And this is our um, Asian Greens row. We harvest this every week for market. This is a weekly harvest to the ground? Yeah. So what's the pro tool here? Is that just a little Johnny's knife? Yeah. Okay, nice. It's a serrated knife. Um, we also use these to weed. Sometimes they, the serrated part and it gets worn down over time because they go in the ground so much, but they're relatively inexpensive. I think they're about $8 each. Oh, really? Okay. This stuff grows so fast that it shades out the weeds. Cool. And the plastic helps a lot. So. We're, yeah. I see, what do you experiment with white and black or what, what's the difference here in the two plastics? <laughs> yeah. So Just trying some different stuff? Well, the white stuff, we planted into white up until about December and then we switched over to the black. Okay. To nice. help, you know, give the plants a little extra heat. But so, the white was really, really helpful in August and September when it was so hot. <laughs> yeah, it didn't yeah. get as hot. Yeah. yeah, higher success rate with the plants. And then we have a water wheel transplanter. That's what we use to plant, and it makes these dibbles, these square dibbles, okay. in the plastic and or the soil, and then it adds. <clears throat> there's a water drum, and the water goes through the wheel, punches a hole, and then there's a. You can adjust the amount of water you add, but. Oh, how add, cool is that? We add fish emulsion, and you sit on the back. Nice. You it. guys are using some fish emulsion too. Yeah. So we add fish emulsion that has seaweed too, and the seaweed really helps with the transplant shock and the roots. So all of that has increased our um, Your yield, survival. productivity, yeah. Yeah, and it helps us. This time. Yeah, time and efficiency, definitely. Time's definitely a big one in this game, huh? Oh my gosh. Can't have enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you guys get started at 7 a.m. What time do you normally get out of the field? We actually keep pretty good hours, I would say. We start, we stop at 4.30 these days. Um, the crew will end at 4.30, so. That doesn't mean you're done at 4.30, does it? No. Where <laughs> are you heading, into the office? <laughs> yeah, sometimes in the office and sometimes to spray and stuff like that, but, okay. you know. 
I guess you spray the stuff in the evenings if you have anything like yeah we spray for lots of the if we do have a problem with um, caterpillars we'll spray an organic um, it's called BT for yeah. Bacillus thuringiensis and it's it's organic it's a bacteria that the caterpillar will eat off the leaf it, the bacteria creates a toxin and they basically isolate that toxin once the caterpillar eats it it can't eat anymore and it will nice. die so usually we plant a crop of buckwheat um, in the fall so that we can get the beneficials there before the crop and that has worked really well with parasitic wasps and caterpillars but this season because of Irma we didn't have time to plant the buckwheat like we had wanted to oh, and wow. so um, we would have had to spray some stuff and then it's light sensitive so yeah you spray it in the evening so that's stuff that you can only put on in the evening or in the morning if you have a couple hours without much um, sun this variety is called Joy Choi. Joy Choi, nice. It's J-O-I. J-O-I, really, okay. Fun to say, I feel. I'm Janie. Um, I've just been with Little Pond since September. Started farming a few years ago, but this is my first time farming in Florida. So it's oh, wow. definitely really... A little different, huh? Really different in some ways. Really similar in others, but Ellen and Cole are awesome. And, uh, you know, they're learning every day too, and it's really fun to be yeah. around that. I think you found an awesome team to be on out here. Certainly do. This is for the 128 cells, which is what we use for pretty much everything. Okay. Um, but these peppers we use the 50 cells. 50 cell? Give them a little more space. So you're actually like planting it. Yeah, nice. Um, That's just giving you the straight line in the hole and then putting the stuff right in front of you. Exactly. And watering it. That's a big one. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. I found that greenhouse. As you can see, beautiful starts for days in here. Let's check it out. That's an early wonder. You can see freshly seeded, like literally freshly seeded. It looks like they use a tool for that, which is pretty cool. And I'm sure they're constantly transitioning at the amount of stuff they're planting here. So yeah, these look almost ready to go, ready for the field. What was really cool was they have a room over there. Ellen showed me up on the main barn that they heat. So right now it's like 80 degrees in there to get that germination process started. As soon as they sprout, they come out here to the greenhouse. They did that exact opposite in the summer. So in August, September, they cool it off. It's, you know, something you really want to spearhead, get going really early. They started in that cool room over here in the, in the barn. So they've got a really cool, cool bot walk-in and they got a really cool propagation room over there. This stuff is really beautiful. I love this. It's Mizuna, and it's a new variety. It came out this year called Ms. America. And it's just this beautiful purple blue color. That is definitely vibrant. Wow. It's gorgeous. It doesn't get the Cercospora and Alternary like the other choice do this time of year when it's 70 degrees. It just looks great. It tastes great. Is there anything you can do to combat that? or? Yes. There's um, a couple organic 
um, funguses you can add. There's uh, actinivy. It's actually a bacteria that eats the fungus and it's organic and it just, it protects the leaf from the fungus. Nice. And we do use that on the brassicas in the greenhouse. Because 70 degrees and wet is pretty much what a lot of our season is and that's when that's the perfect growing conditions for that. Yeah, my dad had a little Christmas tree farm and he was, my parents are from Queens and then I grew up here in Palm Harbor. Pretty much the subdivisions, we had a garden and then now this is, yeah, my... It's your full-time gig, huh? Yeah. It's become the life. Mm -hmm. So you guys are out here producing, I mean, you're on a 26 acre site. You probably have what, maybe five acres in production? Yes, exactly. How are you doing with keeping up with market needs? I mean, are, do you come home with produce or do you sell out every week or? Oh, I wish we sold out. We do come home with a little bit. Sometimes, okay. Yeah, well, every week we come home with a little. Okay. And we give it to the cows, um, we eat a lot of it. But it's modest. It's actually been a pretty good amount that we've been selling. We also have a CSA and so, um, that gets, um, our CSA members pick up at market also. And so you're going to be bagging that tomorrow morning. How many members yes. are you all up to? We have in total, um, 24 each week and some are half shares, some are full shares. Oh, nice. So it's not a huge CSA. Does that fluctuate from year to year you find or? We have increased it a little bit every year. Okay, we, nice. We like to keep it small so that we can make the shares really, really good and diverse and not boring I guess that's, that's our goal is to give them the best of everything so we can do that with a smaller CSA um, better on this we only have five acres so yeah. we are limited in what we can grow but we've always had a packed share and we've always been able to keep our goal of keeping some something to hard to cook you know like a cabbage or something nice. hearty and then some greens and then some herbs and some extra flavor like garlic or hot peppers or ginger. So we've been able to do that cool. every week. So Keeping <laughs> so them happy good. then. Yeah, yeah, we're trying. Yeah, we love our members. We have some members that have been with us since the beginning. So they really believe in you, they really support you and Yes. I mean, I guess they're they're probably learning how to cook and eat different stuff they've never even seen before, right? Yeah. In some cases? Yes, and sometimes they teach us. Really? Yeah, definitely. I love to ask them what they're making with the food. Um, we have a lot of members who are either chefs or they just love to cook or they're doctors and they can tell us, you know, like uh, one of our members, Chip, he's been with us since the beginning and he was telling me that he tastes more sulfur in the cabbage this year and that that's actually like a really health healthful thing to be eating. Really? Um, yeah, so we definitely have a lot of interesting members and it's very cool to see what they do with everything. Yeah, these people must really appreciate good food too, huh? Yeah. What's been the most challenging thing for y'all out here? Um, I would say growing on this, um, on five acres because Cole and I both have a desire, strong desire to um, grow a lot. We're production farmers, we love to create tons of food, we love to see the production go up and up as the science increases and we figure out what everything wants and we just there are things that we really want to grow like artichokes and rhubarb and um, on this five acres it's really hard to do that wow so I would say it's it's that trying to maximize we still do a little kind of market gardening style um, production techniques like putting mixing all the choy into the same row yeah. and then or the, here we have um, celery with fennel down the middle and then halfway down it's all parsley so it's the same family but it's you know you maximize the amount of space for each thing like the fennel will come out and then when, by the time that's out the celery is just starting to get bigger so then we'll cut that out of the middle the celery has room so maximizing our space wow um yeah trying to trying to keep this five acres sustainable for us um and get all of the fun things we want to grow packed in there <laughs> wow so if I, if I caught that correctly i mean i see this and i'm like a little overwhelmed i'm like there's a lot of work a lot of harvesting here <laughs> you want more yes <laughs> you're ready for four times this um well the other thing is <laughs> so <laughs> yeah i would say 20 acres would be amazing um the other thing is we we my background is in conservation biology i have my master's in conservation and we both really 
Cole's background is in permaculture. We care about the soil. We want to be able to do a, a rotation that's more regular. Right now we can only squeeze a two-year rotation for the brassicas and nightshades because we grow so much. If we had more land, we could we could winter cover crop with rye. We could um, put some land out of business for a while yeah. and really get those soil pathogens worked out of there. More time to sit fallow. Yeah, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, so we could do things like that. And of course, <laughs> maybe we could grow rhubarb and artichokes and That'd give you some more space, yeah. yeah. Do you have the space here to expand or you'd have to find some more land? We'd have to find more land, yeah. So on the 26, you've pretty much capitalized and maximized on what's here and usable. Exactly. There may be, every spring we kind of start scratching our heads like, hmm, where are we going to put everything? <laughs> we've actually, the first year we tilled up the field three, the second year we tilled up field four, and the third year field five. So this year we're thinking about that land right to the right of where you drive in. But um, we are also doing creative things like our ginger and turmeric is, we're growing above ground in bags. I saw that, yeah. We don't have to use that space um, in the rows. Um, Does that help a lot with the harvesting time? It's very fast, yeah. So it doesn't definitely. increase the amount of harvest, just makes harvesting easier then? Yeah, it's, Potentially. it's definitely, yeah. yeah, all you have to do is reach in there. Do you replant the soil in the bags or you're refilling them every year with new soil? We're actually, we, um, we save our soil. There's a pile back there in those woods where we oh, really? throw all of our fafford or old, now we use sun grow. Um, we throw all of our soil over there and then we reuse it. So that we reuse for the turmeric that Ginger does want sterile soil so we just purchase that new. Bag soil, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then we are using the, the new ginger soil we're using for tulips. This year we're putting those crates out now. Oh, so really? Yeah. Nice. We're using it then. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So will you get a second cut on these broccolis or is just one cut? Sometimes we do. Um, it just depends on how much we have. Okay. We don't necessarily plan to, but if it stays in the ground for long enough, then we definitely will. That is a serious head of broccoli. We've actually been harvesting broccoli for probably close to two months now. Wow. Um, no, we these don't get any special treatment. They're seeded right in the greenhouse. That's um, it. Sometimes very early in the season, like we'll start our first broccoli as early as August so and we'll seed those just like in, in our barn. Okay. And then once they germinate we move them to the greenhouse but we don't use any shade cloth or anything like nice. that. Nice. So we just throw them out into the elements. Yeah. And Ellen took me in that little hot room so I didn't know if she, I think she mentioned it was a cold room also if needed. So. Right. We do, I mean in the fall we do germinate some things that just cannot handle being outside so like celery yeah. and things like that in the early I guess late summer when we're starting up, that's a cold room. Yeah. And this time of year, it's a warm room for our spring crops like tomatoes and yeah. peppers and things like that. So. I hardly see any weeds in this row. There's pretty much none here to speak of, huh? Oh, there's one. <laughs> the, uh, Are you weeding this at all? or? We occasionally do weed um, in the, especially in the fall when it's wet. The plastic mulch keeps most of the weeds down in the bed, but in our planting holes we will get weeds. And so normally a lot of September and October is spent pulling out baby weeds from baby the weeds. planting hole. Yeah. Um, but this time of year we don't really have to worry about it too much because it's so dry, we're not really getting rain. So Nice. And we don't overhead water, so the only real water that that exposed soil will get is the shot of water when we plant it with the transplanter. So everything out here is on drip? Everything is on drip. That's um, definitely a lot more work. Yeah, we, um, we all of our drip is subsurface, so we um, run our drip down the beds with our bed shaper, and so we shape all of our beds. Um, in theory, they're four inch raised beds, but they drop over time. Um, so like behind me on these They curves. settle out, yeah. Yeah, um, but so there's actually drip irrigation about four inches. Oh, right there, yeah. The soil, so. You're literally just watering the root zone then. Yep. Yeah, and so that helps with capillary action too in the, in the soil for, so that the whole bed will get Evenly saturated. Evenly watered, yeah. yeah.
Heading to St. Pete tomorrow. I've been here almost all day. I left for lunch, I came back, I crashed my drone, all kinds of stuff. Drone repair is gonna be cheap, don't worry. Because we're playing with the dogs, so what do you know? I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, as you can see, little pond farms all set up over here behind me. Let's go in and uh, check out the setup. Jamie's making some heirloom cotton bouquets for Christmas. Nice. That's something we only have once a year at market. So this is limited? Occasion. Limited okay. edition. Limited yeah. edition. All right, yeah. nice. Good morning, Jamie. How are you today? Doing all right. How are you? Good. Oh, look at these. So what kind of flowers are we working with? So these are the cotton. There's red and green. And nice. we harvested it before it pops. Awesome. You can see the, the white. So yeah, very festive. Very beautiful. So this is pretty cool. I see they uh, they do the EBT thing here also at the stand. They got the organic flowers, carrots. Let's go check this place out. Yeah, it's very good stuff. Legit? Super sweet. Yeah, okay, most people. of our foods come from yeah. these Most of your food comes from yeah. these guys? Yeah. It's not just the food, it's the conversations, everything. Yeah. I, don't, I like it, the whole interaction, the connection. Day two, we hung out at the uh, the farm all day yesterday, watched you guys bust your butt, you know, now you're hanging out here in a reefer truck. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell me, I mean, what's after this? You guys work tomorrow? Do you actually get a day off? I mean, what's going on? Yeah, we usually work on Sunday mornings to prepare for planting with the crew, at just a half day. Um, just a half day? <laughs> you guys are working on Christmas Eve? But this... This week, no. We're, okay. we're not working tomorrow or Monday. We're, okay. Everyone's taking off, and um, we just did a little extra work this week. And I saw that. I saw Cole over here busting out trays for next week. Yes. And planning because he's losing that one day. He seemed a little worried, but you guys will be back here next Saturday then? Yes. So what's new for next year? I mean, what, what do you guys see here as far as the market direction? <laughs> keep what's diversifying, new? keep trying new stuff. I mean, yeah. yeah? Lots of um, big peppers, lots of beautiful big peppers, lots of flowers, lots of tomatoes. We just try to do everything a little bit better every year. Nice. I don't think there'll be any drastic changes. <laughs> so just listening to what the clients like and maybe yeah. doing more of it. And... Yeah. Nice. We try to give the people what they want. Give St. Peter's St. Petersburg has been good to us, so we try to. Cool. You guys are obviously doing really awesome work. I mean, it's not too often I run into people your age with, you know, your drive, your uh, organizational skills. I will say there was a lot of things I noticed out there yesterday that, you know, you guys were flowing well. Nobody was wondering what they were doing. I think that's important when you have a workspace. I mean, it shows you all are doing some good work, man. Keep it up, you know. Highly impressed. So, you know, people are going to see you. They're going to be asking, where do I find Little Pond Farm? How do I support them? Where, where do they look you up? Do you guys have a website? You can find us online. Our website is littlepondfl.com. Little Pond. Um, you can find us there. You can find us every Saturday um, from the first Saturday of October until the last Saturday of May here um, in the Al Lang Stadium parking lot at the Saturday Morning Market. Nice. Is the largest farmers market in the southeast United States? Southeast United States. So now I see why you guys drive all the way here. And okay. The best. And the best. Yeah. Um, well, of course. Yeah, it's a it's a great market and has a few great farms here. Um, and we're here every week. And you can also read about our CSA online. Um, nice. We accept um, a small amount of members every year, and they get the best of our crop. Nice. So do you guys get a season off at all, or what? A season? I mean, you get like a month <laughs> off? What's the deal? I mean, you, you're not taking summers off or anything? Florida is fun, me, and fun <laughs> because you're basically growing year round. I mean, we, our season, we finish cleaning up the field and cover copy in June, and then we start seeding for the fall in July. Wow. So there's pretty much where it keeps us on our toes, it keeps us busy. Um, that's pretty much what I would say about that. <laughs> so you guys haven't had a vacation, I could tell, here in a minute, huh? We've we had do. a little bit of we time do. off. Of a little something? Summers. We try okay. to squeeze out a little bit of time for ourselves. Um, we also, there's a little bit of a 
not necessarily a change of pace because we pretty much go hard through the summer, um, but the pressure is off as far as producing every week for our members and for our customers. So nice. we get a big break from actually having to like pull any food from the field. So we plant our field and cover crops. Um, we do any infrastructural improvements or additions um, during the summer. So it sounds like you guys don't get your minds out of the field ever, huh? Not no. really. Oh, not when you love your job, though. I guess there's nothing really to escape, huh? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. We also plant a lot of summer crops in June once we're done clearing up the field. Well, or before. Ginger and turmeric, Brazil, all that goes in. Okra and things, yeah. yeah. Okay, summertime stuff. Yeah, okra we wait a little. You could, but it's so fast, so we don't have to plant that till August. Nice. Basically yeah. just the things that we'll plant in the summer and then we won't okay. have to really mess with them until October, sweet potatoes, um, things like that. So nice. we've grown peanuts, dry beans, things like that. Sweet, well you guys are doing awesome work. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing a follow up, I'm gonna be coming back to the farm. I know I missed that planner, so you guys gave me like a must have <laughs> reason to come back. So, yeah, yeah, thanks for showing me around. Thanks for having us guys and keep up the hard work. Thanks. Thank you. So this is the kind of craziness you find at the farmer's market. Let's go check out what this guy has going on. That is pretty cool, bro. All right, so Little Pond Farm, St. Pete Market. These guys are crushing it out here, and I think it gives a little bit of hope to the you know that young person that's going to school, or you know that that younger person that's really just uncertain of their career decision. Um, you know, when you see what these guys are doing over here, um, a it's fun, b it's rewarding, and c they're making a living. Um, pretty impressive, pretty legit. They're doing some awesome stuff over here. I almost forgot those ending credits. I'm getting out of this fog engulfed uh, yacht club that you could say here behind me. And uh, I'm sure everybody enjoyed the little pond farm feature. Please don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and the most important part, pound it. <laughs>